Here on the bench are all of the pieces for the funeral chairs I'm making cut to size. I am just beginning to do joinery. You can see here I've got actually on these legs I have nothing but on the shorter legs I have some of the holes cut for the hinges drilled out. Um, and I think today I'm going to start working on the longer legs. Oh, in fact, there's a little bit of joinery in the longer legs, just another pin drilled. Yeah. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about in this little video was the seats. Um, here are my two seat blanks, and you can see that's the shape of the seat. About an inch thick. Um, as with the whole thing, I'm making them out of timber strand, because what the hell, that's how I roll. Um, and the way I laminated the seats for aesthetic purposes was with these are a little difficult to tell there in the end grain but these are timber strands with the grain running vertically I'm going to loosely call it grain and they're all laminated together so both the factory glue lines and my glue lines run lengthwise from the front to the back of here's the front to the back I don't remember which one's the front um, but they run lengthwise from front to back um, as I was doing that, it dawned on me that the seat is only supported with a little pin here, a pin here, and a mirror on the other side. So this span across the width of the seat, which is in the 14 inch range, something like that. Uh, let's see. It is, try again, 14 inches. Okay. It's unsupported. And while I know the timber strand is very strong, <coughs> excuse me, running in long lengths like this, I can stand on this piece and not break it. I wasn't so sure about it, the way that orientation. So, what I did was I took this piece, which is a scrap. I actually laminated this as one long piece and cut it to length so I got the two seats and this scrap. Um, and I put this with a board under it here and here, and I put it actually on this little table here, and I kind of jumped and plopped my butt down on it, and cracked it and it didn't actually crack at one of my glue lines you can see it cracked in, uh, in these are the factory glue lines so what I thought was well, what am I gonna do and I kicked it around for a little while and I decided that what I was gonna do was recess some steel in the underside of the seat running side to side to give it a lot more strength and as I thought about different ways to do it with an L-bend um, or an L-bracket, I thought, you know what, let me just use threaded rod. I realize that threaded rod is a little weak. The threads make it a little bit weaker than a straight rod. But I thought the threads would be beneficial because they would bite to the epoxy really well. So what I ended up doing was I, in this sample board, this is the first one I've done, I milled two slots here. And these are a half inch wide by a half inch deep. And I, I, uh, I put little spacers in the bottom and I poured them about roughly half fill with clear epoxy. I dropped in the threaded rod and then I poured blue tinted epoxy over that. So I've got 3 8 threaded rod in a half inch hole and the threaded rod is pretty close to centered within that hole. So now these run almost from edge, edge to edge across the width of this piece. So what I'm going to do now is set this piece up with a very similar test because it is narrower, have it with this chunk broken off of it, uh, rather than try to plop my butt on it, I'm going to set it up on the floor and jump up and down with my foot right here and see if I can get it to split and hopefully confirm that the threaded rod is in fact strong enough and then what I will do is add the threaded rod reinforcement to those seats. So let me get set up and see how this works. There we go. Let's give it a try. Still stuck. I think that's going to work. 
Leave that work over there nicely. And you know what? It adds a bit of weight to the seat. So those of you who are asking why did I dye it blue, um, because I think the blue is damn pretty. And that is how I'm going to ultimately finish the chairs. The whole reason I'm making them out of the timber strand, behind, besides the fact that I kind of like the stuff, um, is I think the way the timber strand accepts dye, specifically blue dye, is just beautiful. And it's much deeper and much prettier than you could imagine. Now, the lighting here is rather poor. But you see that wash coat? This is timber strand, and what this has is a cut of half pound shellac on it, and then blue dyed shellac over that. So it's a very thin wash coat. What I have down here on the bottom, which again, because the lighting, you don't really appreciate it, you can't see, is that's the blue dyed uh, shellac, a half pound cut of shellac with blue trans tint in it, uh, applied right to it. And if the lighting was better, you'd see how deep and rich the grain becomes. And I was really fond of it. And actually, I showed it to my wife, and she really likes it. So one of these seats is staying in our house. And actually, this slab back here of Timber Strand is going to become a desk. That's going to get the same blue dye. Uh, someday I'll experiment with another color, but I'm not looking for wood tones. I'm looking for vibrant colors. The other colors I've seen in the trans tints are like reds and oranges and... I think the blue is a little bit more muted and a little bit better for the least obnoxious interior decor color. So anyway, that's why the dye is blue. And uh, from past experience, having used blue tinted epoxy um, and then dyed a project blue, it's not completely invisible, but it's pretty close to invisible. And with this installed on the bottom of the seat, I think it'll be you'll be hard pressed. Other than the fact that it's heavy, you'll be hard pressed to know that this has been done. So that's why I'm dying in blue.